Okay, so here we go. These chairs are way too comfortable, man. I'm so relaxed. Which is kind of smart if you're like chatting to people, you want them to be relaxed because then they just say yeah. all of I the know. things. I know. You're smart. I know. You're good at this. Um, hey everyone, welcome to uh, Actors Talk About Themselves. Uh, this is episode something rather, depends on when I release it. So, um, uh, and as you can see, see I've got multicam. Ha! It's called professional. So. Called professional. That's my selfie stick. See, so we've got other angles. And so we've, we've technically got three cameras because we've got that one, then we've got that one, and then if I go like that, we've got but sort of got, that one. Are you on? Oh, oh that's another see, angle got right three, there. I know. So, so I'm gonna run, that. I'm going to run a bit of this action at the same time. Um, although I'm going to get really tired holding this shortly. Um, yeah. Anyway, welcome um, to our interview series. This is our. Go this is my. Go I was going to go up the back because it's really nice at the back of our house. Yeah. Um, and uh, but uh, my extension cords don't go all the way. But anyway, I better um, Heather. Hey, hey. Hi. This is my mate Heather. Heather What's Maltman. Up? Now you're an actor. We did yeah. acting study together. We did. Yeah. We studied Meisner together. We did study That's, Meisner uh, together. Three years of intense. Three. Intense training. <laughs> did you do the fast course? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was there for about. 17 years I just can't remember it was so long but it was pretty good and for those that don't Meisner is based on Sandy Meisner who trained um, I guess under the the basic methods of Stanislavski yeah and then there's Meisner there's Strasbourg which is the method because people call Meisner method but Meisner isn't the method it is no it's not wanna, really I don't want to like open up a whole can of worms about that but people say That'll be interesting a, for comments later yeah, exactly a method actor but Meisner is basically it's it's uh, being truthful in imaginary circumstances that's Man, the, whole, you're good. the whole thing yeah. Billy will be so proud of I know he will be Billy, Billy, <laughs> Billy the actress boss is our teacher who was just yeah. insane He's the most insanely passionate um, about yeah. acting study. So uh, all about it, mate. So uh, so welcome to my welcome to my garden. So, so, sorry we couldn't. I was going to actually get you. Part of the reason to interview today was actually to get someone to help me um, put the table back up the back. But um, we didn't quite get to that because my extension cord. Otherwise, Honestly. I would have. I would have got you. Totally would have got you to move furniture. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's cute because I would have yeah. done that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just going to turn off second cam because my arm's getting tired. Is that, is that on? Is that off? It's still on. Uh, this is why what's, we're what's the point? What's the point of having a button if you can't, if you've got a... <laughs> <coughs> slick. Totally slick. Um, yeah, we thought we'd be in the garden. Actually, it's a shame because just before we, uh, we started uh, recording, we had a chainsaw on that. It just would have been perfect. It, yeah, it would have been so good because it would have been atmospheric. Yeah. You, felt, you would have felt like you were really a part of the conversation. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. But we're a part of nature. Like We're in a, a part of North Sydney and you know yeah. we're like being in the bush. We've got it's kookaburras nice. and we've got... I did a voice job in, in my studio um, last week and I literally I had to wait till after 10 o'clock till the birds started chirping. Mm. To just stop chirping. I mean like the kookaburras, rainbow lorikeets. Mm. Um, my daughter Rosie, she called all of the, all the rainbow lorikeets um, Sophia, like all of them. And all the magpies are called Barbara. That's just the way it is. Do you know what though? Like they all look the same, so I would do the same thing. It just she's a logical kid. She yeah. gets it. She gets what it's about. Yeah, she's very smart. She's she's yeah. way smart for her age. Yeah, like five. Because how are you going to track all the different names? It's like you, you name them all different things, and then you're like, oh great, I I don't remember which one was Harry now. But she was like that, you know, with toy duck. What's it called? Duck. It's a toy yeah, chicken. Good. It's called chicken. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's that's what. It, anyway, like we're going to talk a little bit about acting. Um, mm. So, so what's what's the go with acting for you? What what, um, what sort of got you into being an actor? Because we're talking about what, what it's like being an actor, you know. Because we're either working or we're doing something else, which yeah. is usually most of the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What was the attraction for you? Um, I first wanted to be an actor when I was probably about five years old, yep. and um, I was very unpopular and living in quite possibly some of the worst sort of neighbourhoods you can live in. Proper mm. Houso kids, so yep. Houso massive. Um, mm. There were, you know, there were times when I was bullied so badly that, you know, we just, look, it was rough, let's just put it that yeah. way. So I kind of found solace in like performing in that with the young kids in my neighborhood. So mm. we would get together and, you know, we collect all the parents together, hashtag junkies. Um, and we would <laughs> perform these little skits and stuff yeah, yeah. And, and do these little shows. And I mean, the audience loved it. I mean, most of them were probably jacked up anyway and thinking, what are these like tiny midgets doing performing for us? Mm. Um, and that was a good segue into the film industry, really, isn't it? Right? I was like, that's yeah. where my passion came from. I was like, this is fun. And yeah. it, it, like, you know, it was a it's kind of an outlet for all of my frustration, fear, mm. um, emotion, all of that stuff. It was, it was incredible. So that's sort of how it all started. And then I discovered 
that if I did writing, yeah. so I would write these little plays, these yeah. little like seven minute plays. Yeah. If I wrote these plays and then handed them to my teacher, she would let me cast fellow students in them, oh. which meant not only did or I get not out, cast the people you didn't like. Right. Yes. So I was either I either got out of class yeah. for like that short period of rehearsal yeah. forward slash we ate chocolate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it also meant that like we could put on these shows at the end of the day, and it was one way that kids would actually talk to me. Nice. So I made th I made friends through that. Look, I should probably talk to a therapist about that. Actually. Oh uh, look, but, yeah. I, I think every actor like I, I know for myself, I, I got into acting because suddenly it was a way that people noticed me and mm. kids, other kids liked me. I wasn't part of the cool group. Yeah. I, I sort of had to find my own niche into the cool group. Yeah. And for me, like, it was pretty the same. Like, for me, it was making people laugh. Was yeah. that, That's how I got in. And oh, I reckon man. there'd be so many actors that almost like it's a, because at school's like survival. You've got to find a way to survive yeah. and, and try and cut through. And, you it's know, a jungle out there. Yeah, for a lot of, I reckon a lot of actors, they, they sort of, they turned to acting so they wouldn't get yeah. beat up, you know? I mean, I was lucky. Yeah. That never happened to me, but it was definitely a way to get in. Yeah. Totally. Totally. I completely agree with you. Did you have like a, a thing that you knew would work? Like I had a thing that I knew would work. Mm. Like I, I burped the alphabet. Every time I did that, nice. kids were like, she's so cool. And I was like, I know I'm totally nice. going to throw up later because that was We'll really do painful. that in another episode. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, like, I, I really like physical comedy from, from a young age, and that was, that was my thing. And I was, you know, I was always big. I was the overweight ginger kid, mm. you know, as opposed to now. Um, yeah, but, like, there's also the opposite side to that, when yeah. you're so skinny that your head is too big for your body, which <laughs> is how I got the nickname Lollipop. So <laughs> Sorry, you can bullying, go, you, bullying isn't cool. No, bullying is not cool. But I, I do have, like, some amazing memories from mm. that time in my life, and I have mm. a theory on bullying. Mm. I think instead of trying to stop the bullies, what we should be doing is trying to empower the kids that are being bullied because you can't, yeah. you can't change another person. You can only change yourself. Yeah. That's my theory. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm, t I'm totally into that. And I think that's, that's what the great things that I like now. I'm teaching even some, I've taught some high school kids as well. And, and it's just, you know, and we, we found that with our study. Like, not only we learn about acting, but you actually you learn more about yourself and how mm. about how to really accept yourself, which is true. which is it. Because you're right. I mean, you can't do anything about about uh, other people. You can't change. You, you, quite often, you can't change your circumstances. You certainly no. can't change other people. The only thing no. you can alter is, I guess, your experience of of them. You know, totally. and if you can do that, then you've got power over it. You know. Yeah, I think that's one thing I really loved about Meisner is like mm. because it is about telling a deeper truth and yeah. not lying as a character yeah you have to get in touch with those parts of yourself that you're, yeah. that you're scared of you know like you have to get in touch with that even in the first in the first year when you first start studying in that school mm. you know you're doing these improvised activities where you have to bring in something physically difficult almost impossible to do so mm. you've got to really tap into sides of yourself that you wouldn't mm. normally do like the sexy side the angry side the you know, the, those really deep emotional parts of yourself that you wouldn't normally show. Hi, Sophia. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That's how you know we're actually in Australia. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. That's cool. And, and like, yeah, You're other things too. Is, oh no, that, that's the white copper toast. Just don't leave bread out. They'll just they'll, they'll never leave. Um, you've eaten your toast. How was your peanut butter? Oh my god. You know, you know, you're in a good place when your friend like asks you over to do a, a little podcast interview and they're like, do you want a piece of peanut butter toast? And you're like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> best ever. Yeah, I know, absolutely. Oh, and you. now like acting's the one thing and, and you know, what I'm sort of discovering more and more as I get older, and it's taken me a long time, is that, you know, to just do your art every day and just to find something that really inspires you. Now, I know that, you know, acting's one thing for you, but also mm -hmm. writing and producing stuff. I mean, yep. basically you get shit done and you make stuff happen, so that's, yeah. Tell me a bit more about that. How did you get into the sort of producing side? Well, it's funny, man. <clears throat> I think I actually got that from, from Billy. Because mm. when I first started studying, I was only ever like, I just want to be an actor. That's yeah. it. And then the more I started learning, I was like, I want more. Like, this is, mm. this is not enough for me. I want to sink my teeth into more stuff. And mm. um, he actually asked me to help build the school, which I was like, cool, I can do that. Mm. And from there, like, in those, in those uh, sort of, you know, building, building sort of sessions with him, mm. He would teach me about writing and producing and directing mm. and, and all of that sort of stuff. And I used that mm. as my foundation on becoming a better actor. And it's like, you know, the, the first film I ever made was uh, was with Aaron, mm. which is uh, Aaron Glenane from Drift. Mm. And um, that film is terrible. It will never see the light of day. It's mm. terrible. Yeah. Um, but at the time, I was like, this is amazing. I've yeah. just made an amazing film. And I was like, cool. Yeah. Glad that never got released. Um, and... You know, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got from Actors Pulse was 
your work will always get better as you move along and stuff that you thought was great then mm. will look terrible in a few years time mm. and it's so true like the stuff that I've made now I'm a little bit like oh god like is it really that good or do I just think it's that good because that's the level I'm at right now mm. you know and it's but everyone says that. I mean, you know, you read magazines about these top filmmakers. Everybody says that yeah. about their work. And I think it's taken me a long time because I'm, I, I, I could say a perfectionist, but underneath all that, I, I'm scared of doing bad stuff and being judged yeah. badly. So that's what's always stopped me from going and just putting work out there, just doing it. And yeah. I read this great book um, called The War of Art and okay. also being pro, a guy called uh, Stephen Pressfield who wrote The Legend of Bagabans or something like that. And he yeah. said he wrote so much rubbish before that got released and yeah. his whole sort of mantra I guess is you know rather than inspiration happens sort of you know out of the air he said his inspiration happens at 9 a.m. every day yeah um, you know and that's and just working and just putting it out there and you know wow, uh, my really poor smart. agent's been Dave's been trying to tell me that for so long and yeah um, and now I'm finally realizing a friend of mine said you just got to do your art every day yeah. and now I'm just I'm getting it's like you know we'll just keep going and keep going and keep putting it out and then it'll just grow yeah. um, Plus the other thing is like the hardest thing with the difference between Australia and LA is in LA there's so many people over there something is always being made. Yeah. But here if you want to be an actor you've got to do stuff. You've got to do stuff yourself because yeah. it will not be given to you. Yeah, you, yeah. you can get lucky. I mean like Joel Jackson got very lucky. He yeah. went to NIDA and he just happened to pick up some really big jobs on yeah. his way out the door. Like yeah. that is a very rare circumstance you know yeah. and that that is when it comes down to a little bit of luck but also I know that guy he works his butt off man he works mm. really hard on his on all of his art but um, you know you have if you want to make it in this industry you've got to learn all the different facets like mm. I wanted to I wanted to make a short film and because I didn't know how to edit it didn't get it's still not finished because mm. I can't edit it myself and I can't find an editor to help me so mm. when I went to LA and I uh, was hanging out with my ex he was like so determined to make a short film with me and I was like no no I really don't want to because I know how much work goes into it and I know I won't be able to find an editor and then I was like well I could use this as an opportunity to teach myself how to edit so yeah. we shot it on my iPhone for a festival which was kind of part of the stipulation on it got some editing software got myself my laptop out just loaded up all the stuff and just started teaching myself to edit now it is a terrible edit I am the first to acknowledge that <laughs> it but is did it. awful but I did it and I finished yeah. it and that's the thing it's like you know if you want to make it work you and you want to be in this industry you got to be proactive and you just got to find a way to win and that's mm. that's bottom line that's all there is to it you know well, and, and that's what I learned from because I, I did that short film with you you know like the, the Skype exchange and which is still yeah, happening I know, I know. I'm it, so, it was so excited it was so funny some of the things that we did in it but it, it, like the two oh things gosh. I learn when I do these like projects with people I know I mean the one thing is that you get a sense of wow if they can do it maybe I can do it so mm. there's that but the other side of it the complete flip side is man this takes something and yeah. and like I always no matter what the project ends up like or the experience I have I'm always in awe of people who just basically put their nuts on the line and go yeah. I'm going to do this and they actually go through it. Like I got a feature film that we filmed uh, called Blue World Aura, like at the beginning of last year. Oh, yeah. And you know, it was it was low budget, and there were a lot of ups and downs with it. You know, because it was low budget, and yeah. you know, there, there wasn't enough people, I guess, on it. But it's going to look amazing. But yeah. what I, what I'm really left with is that just the courage that that Jay took to, to put this together yeah. and that he took it on and he did it and he's so focused you know he's obsessed probably one would say which you have to be like totally yeah. to get this film done and it's going to be great and you know just yeah. from, I just saw what it took what it took from him to get it done and you yeah. know part of that scares me and thinks I never want to do it but the other part's like well man if, if I if he can maybe I could find the courage as well totally cool I loved working on Skype exchange with you man that was that was an amazing shoot. <laughs> it was pretty out there. That was an amazing shoot. So <clears throat> for those of you playing at home, Skype Exchange is basically, it's a short film that mm. is about a young girl and a young guy who are trying to have a long distance relationship. Yeah. And it's just not going very well because he wants to be intimate online. She doesn't know how to do it. She's quite awkward. And her housemate is, seems to be a sex god and has all of the answers. So... Typecast. Uh, <laughs> what? A little bit, little bit too much laughing. A little bit too much laughing there. <laughs> Do you know what, hey, dude? Like, get the chainsaw. Awesome. Chainsaws, real chainsaws. Production quality. That, that's not a drop-in. That's um, not an effect drop-in. No, that's yeah. not. That's yeah. legit. It was fun. It was so much fun. Oh, man. Like, we... Okay, so there's a couple of scenes that obviously can't be in the film due to length. Mm. But there's this amazing scene where um, Claire, the character that I was playing, 
she's basically trying to have you know talk dirty sort of Skype sex she's in her underwear and a single time she's trying to like get the Skype to work and all of a sudden it cuts out and mm. it, it starts dropping in and out and I my character walks out into the lounge room to try and get some reception not really thinking anyone's home like not really being aware of her surroundings which you know we all do when we're hot and bothered and in the moment and as she's trying to get reception and it's just completely cut out she realizes that old mate Gil the housemate is sitting on the couch with a woman the funny part is I actually cast my sister in the role Hashtag nailed it. Um, and we roll with it. Like, we just started improving <clears throat> and we actually rolled with it and it came up with some really cool lines where I was like, My sister, really? Come on, man. <laughs> and it's, it, was so, it was an amazing She's scene. A good sport. Great sport. Good kid, that Jazzy. Good, yeah, good yeah. kid. But yeah, unfortunately, we couldn't use it in the, in the actual final take just because, you know, the, like the gold that we did with Gil's character, yeah. not everything could fit. I actually thought about doing a music video dedicated nice. to Gil because nice. there was so much gold from it. But, but, but I mean, that's the thing. Whenever you film something and you just know the moments that can't be in there for various reasons, yeah. whether it doesn't move the story along or it's a bit clunky or it just needs yeah. to flow or even just, just shorter. I mean, there's always going to be those, but you'd rather have a whole lot of gold that you've got to sift some out oh, yeah. than not enough to try and pad it, you know? Yeah. So. Well, that's actually one thing I've learned as an editor recently is that mm. I always thought that um, you can tell a good editor because a film is really, really good or whatever. And mm. and then I wondered, well, how do you know if the acting was really good or if the editing was really good? Yeah, yeah. And a friend of mine who was an editor actually said to me, he goes, well, basically, if the if the acting is really, really good, sometimes it's hard to know when you should move off of someone and move to another conversation or yeah. when you cut to a set of hands doing <clears throat> something or whatever. And he's mm. like... That's when that's when an editor's craft is really hard because mm. when it's bad acting, you know you need to edit around it and you need to make it look good. Yeah, it's actually much harder to edit something that's really good. Yeah, right. Okay. So, and that right. was actually part of the problem that we had with Skype Exchange. All the acting in it, from you, from Aaron, from the girls that played your whores, uh, it was uh, it was tough, man. It was <laughs> tough to cut around all you guys, and it, you know. It, cutting in between different shots and that and like where do we put sex scenes in mm. so many sex scenes but not in the way that you would expect like and Laura's like so what'd you do today what was your um well, I dressed in a teddy bear costume and jumped up and down on a bed with a couple of girls in like slutty outfits what yeah I, I don't I didn't say that I definitely didn't say that no, just what she doesn't well she's gonna know now but <laughs> hi Laura <laughs> I'm a really good director yeah, yeah no it's, yeah. It, it's a lot of fun yeah and man. of course you know we can't have this conversation without talking about the other project you took on uh, last year you were in The Bachelor ah uh, yes tell now me that's about a, that's a one with sex scenes yeah um, now, now, now tell me about like, as an actor mm. I, I remember having a conversation with you about it and you were yeah. freaking out you didn't know whether it was going to be a good move or a bad move yeah uh, I mean personally I think it was a great move right but bef before that I mean what, what was going through your mind about doing a reality show <sighs> mate do you know what like a lot of I <sighs> I, I think back to that moment so many times and I'm like, I, I still to this day, I, I think I, I think because I wasn't there to raise a profile or do any of that stuff, I literally was there for an experience and to mm. meet a guy. Mm. Um, I think that's why it, <clears throat> it has been such an incredible experience for me and mm. it's actually helped me career-wise because I wasn't expecting anything career-wise from yeah. it. I was actually expecting to meet a dude and fall happily in love and like, have this really cool romantic story and now that I'm saying that out loud I'm realizing how stupid that is um, but I'm, I'm a yeah, but, hopeless but, romantic but everybody so. does that in real life and then you, you, you look about how stupid <laughs> yeah. that sounds in real life you know it's, yeah, it's exactly. life exactly yeah I'm I am such a hopeless romantic at, at heart and mm. um, you know I I literally implored about four or five of my closest friends you included before I went on the show because I was like I was terrified that by doing that it would actually ruin my career. I was like, mm. people are going to think that I'm a fame whore, that I'm in it for myself, that I'm this, you know, and what if I look like, what if I look stupid? What if they edit me to look really bad? Like, because mm. I say some weird shit, man. I'm crazy. I know mm. that. It's mm. fine. But it's like, uh, you know, all they have to do is just edit one thing to make it yeah. sound bad and then I look like and a have you seen douche. Unreal have you seen the program Unreal I have everyone asks me about that like have you seen Unreal and it's you know what Unreal is, is pretty close to accurate the difference between that and Australian Bachelor is on Australian Bachelor it's really not that choreographed you, yeah. you definitely have producers because they yeah. have to follow your storyline and mm. make sure that you know it's all being put into line accurately mm. But in terms of like, you know, things being set up to the point of ridiculous or mm. encouraging people to get white girl wasted, that just isn't 
that yeah. just isn't there you know like i yeah. never had alcohol shoved down my throat i mean at most cocktail parties even though i had a glass of champagne yeah. that was water yeah right yeah so i never drank at any of the cocktail parties because i'm not stupid yeah because <laughs> you, <laughs> you know you're filming these long days yeah. really really long days yeah. you're you've got feelings for this guy you've got another you know 14 girls around you that also have feelings for this guy well at least they're meant to yeah and you're you're working and you're you're emotional and you get to the end of the day to do this cocktail party and you are just exhausted and then it's like and now have a champagne it's like yeah no i mean w was it some of the hardest work you've ever done yeah that it show? was that is the hardest job i've ever done in my entire life and wow. it wasn't meant to be a job yeah like, hardest by far and i yeah. think i think the reason why is because it was so emotional <clears throat> like i was literally being every part of myself and i remember every morning i'd wake up in the mansion and i'd be like okay remember be yourself who are you what do you want what mm. do you believe in are you putting yourself out there as much as you can for this other person that you have feelings for? Mm. Um, be mindful, be respectful of, you know, mm. how the other girls are feeling, be respectful of how, you know, my biggest thing was, and I said this to Sam off camera, I was like, I do not want to make out with you on camera in a really big way or be overly flirtatious because I know that young girls are going to be watching this mm. and I am not interested in portraying to a young girl that the only way a guy will like you is if you let him manhandle you. Mm like there are other ways to mm. show your affection to a man and there are other ways to create a connection with a person without having to get all you know mm. up in one's bits mm. so yeah and it's like unfortunately making that choice I think that's part of the reason why I got friend zoned but at the end of the day like you were very popular on the show I mean you know the, the, there was you got a lot of great press and, and, and that's the thing I think when we had the conversation about should I do it and, and mm. like obviously I didn't know how it was going to work out but I, I had a mm. sense I knew that it would be good for your profile I, I knew that just, just yeah, from, right. from, from that I knew that would be good but I yeah, also right. knew it was like a massive risk you know and mm. you know um, I think probably most of your friends were going you know like it's, it was a massive oh. risk to take but it was such a ballsy call <laughs> I, you know? I had four or five people telling me not to do it mm. um, really close people that mm. you know would have been friends that I would include in the home visits thing yeah um, and the main reason why is because exactly what I said, I was terrified that it would just ruin everything. Because I've worked so hard in this industry mm. the same way mm. most actors have. Like I've bled for my career. Mm. I've worked my ass off to get to a point where mm. I'm working full time in our industry. Mm. And I was just terrified that by doing that, mm. people wouldn't take me seriously anymore. And I guess, you know, one of, the, one of the first things I said to the producers was, I will not go on this show unless I'm able to be... 100% honest about what I do. I want to be able to say, I am a filmmaker. I have done acting. Mm. I'm on IMDb. I've been doing this for years, you know, yep. because the truth is going on the show mm. and my career were not the same thing. They were yeah. two different things. The Bachelor was an experience. It was a moment for me to really put myself out there because truth is, dude, after my long-term relationship that I was in, yeah. I'd been, in, I'd been broken up for three years and I was not putting myself back out there. I was not having relationships. I was not really mm. allowing myself mm. to fall in love again. And that's how it all sort of started. I got drunk with my girlfriends and they were like, you should apply. And I was like, I'm gonna apply for the national. <laughs> and I applied and I, I forgot all about it. I, my application was really funny. Like yeah. it was just stupid, man. So when they offered me to do it, I was like really, really shocked. Yeah. And really apprehensive. Yeah. So, but, it, but but I think it did. I think it did have a major impact on you. I mean, it, it had a major it impact doors, on my life. Doors. Well, that, that's yeah, that's the other thing I'm going to get like, to. But 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 on your career, it certainly opened doors, right? Yeah, like doors that I didn't even know were there. Like it was, mm. it's just insane, man. Like I, I'm I'm so incredibly grateful and humbled by the experience because mm. I wasn't expecting that, and it's, mm. man, I, I just I feel really lucky for it. You know, it's one mm. of those moments where you just go. Wow, thank you. Thank you, universe. Thank you to, you know, people who actually, yeah. you know, like I, I've had people com like contact me directly after I finished on the show just saying thank you for being real. And to those people, I say thank you for getting in touch with me because it's, you know, hearing their stories and what they've been through because people, people have really reached out and told me some mm. really incredible things that they've been through themselves. And it's mm. like, you know, to each one of those people, I always did my best to reply and always let them know, you know, that they were heard, that that it matters that you know it's it's a safe environment to be real and you know I, I hope to keep prolonging that and I you know any any radio stuff that I'm doing any TV hosting stuff that I'm doing now 
my biggest thing is I really want to create a platform where it's safe for women to be themselves. It's I'm so crazy passionate about it now ever since mm. doing the show. Yeah. And did you find there was a certain, obviously there's a lot of people who are very, that, that you had some huge amount of fans and they loved, you know, your openness. I mean, did you find, how did you find that the element, because they're always at the people who just wanted to, they were excited because you were on this show and because mm. you were on TV. I mean, there's always that element as well. Well, it's funny, man, because like, I, I feel like if I was if I was doing like a, a movie or a TV show or something and, and people came up to me then I would say yeah that's that person is a fan what's been different about Batch is I, I feel like because I was really myself mm. these are I don't I don't see the people who talk to me now as fans I see them as friends I see them as mm. just regular guys and girls that mm. want to come up and have a chat with me because they feel like mm. they know me and the truth is you do the whole yeah. of Australia knows my story they know who I am they know what I'm about mm. and it's me who doesn't know the person yeah. and it's this inc like dude I get this incredible gift this in insane opportunity I feel like I'm getting way too excited here I need to calm down <laughs> maybe it was the tea the peanut butter. it was the peanut butter um, but yeah I get I get to share these incredible stories with people that I've never even met mm. and actually hear what they're about you know mm. and and it's and most people say to me oh, I feel like I know you I'm sorry if it's weird I'm like Dude, you do know me. Yeah. I just don't know you. So tell me about you. Like, what's mm. your name? Who are you? Like, what are you about? And mm. it, it, yeah. it's an amazing experience, and it reminds me in some way about my experience on the Hobbit because yeah. you know it was it was a great experience, and you know like, I didn't get to do a lot of you know couldn't see my face or say like a lot of the acting stuff, but the project itself gave me a profile, and yeah. I got to meet some amazing people, and I still get to meet amazing people, and that's one of the reasons I'm doing these because people yeah. are they're hungry for more stuff, yeah. you know, they they want more content, so that's why I'm I'm doing these interviews, and yeah. you know, and I think we're probably in the same boat. It was you know like it it, it it's almost like. You know, we had those great experiences. We met some amazing people, yeah. and at the same time, it opened doors. But what I find now, and you're probably the same, it doesn't like guarantee you anything. But I get more opportunities. I know you get more opportunities. But it's almost like for me, I've got to work harder because these opportunities are bigger than they used to be. Oh my god! Yeah, the, yeah, the level of work that I have to put into what I'm doing now, as opposed mm. to a year ago, is is next level. <clears throat> and it's uh, because I wasn't prepared for that jump. Yeah. I've been playing a little bit of catch up for the last six to eight months, yeah. but I feel like I'm it's all it's almost like I got a promotion I wasn't ready for. Yeah, right. I was like, oh cool, I'm an intern. I'm I'm learning the ropes. I I'll probably get a promotion to reception in, in a couple of weeks' time. And they yeah. were like, We're gonna make you CEO and I was like <laughs> What? Yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like I've been you know, I've kind of been learning in the spotlight, which can be hard, man, because they slammed me on IAC now when I did the hosting gig. Like slammed me. Thank you, DailyMail.co.uk. You guys are What's great. What's that one? The, the, um, the, I'm a celebrity. Yeah, the Up Late saw, Show that I, I did. I didn't see a lot of that, but what I saw, I really liked. I thought it was amazing. Do you know what, Who man? are you co-hosting with? I did that with Joel Creasy. Yeah. Funniest, skinniest, blonde dude in the world. So funny. I, I thought you were great. I thought you were great. I mean, Thanks, man. It was funny. I heard a great thing. I was watching an interview with Neil Young, like on, just on my phone because it was like I went to see him in 1985 in New Zealand when he did his, his concert my first ever concert Western Springs Auckland like a big dome of pot mm. smoke over there and he was doing an interview and someone asked him about critics he goes yeah well you know they're critics that's what they do they criticize things they're, they're yeah. not enjoyers they're not yeah. enjoyers they're, they're critics so you know yeah yeah balls and to them. do you know what though like the biggest thing I learned from that whole thing mm. was just having pride in learning and being comfortable in that like it's okay yeah. to make mistakes yeah and even though people are gonna rip you apart for it who gives a flying f-bomb man yeah. like you you've got to put yourself out there because you never know what could happen if you do and from doing the show I actually learned that lesson that I'm incredibly passionate about being real and being myself and mm. giving people space to feel like they can be real as well like it's just it, mm. it's so important that we have that especially mm. as women like oh my god i'm such a feminist at the moment <laughs> a dirty dirty feminist i'm gonna stop shaving under my armpits soon it's gonna get hectic <laughs> so what's next so what's next what do you got what's, what's coming up next i wrote a play yeah i wrote a 10 minute play that got accepted into hollywood short and sweet oh nice yeah um and it's going to be performed over there at the end of september are you going over uh, well, that's the thing. I've got two legendary actors from Queensland who want to perform it for me. And it's this really kind of... It's so different, man. It's, it's, it's very out there. It's, basically, it's called Just a Girl. And mm. it's, it's kind of like a movement piece that's mixed in with like 
props and dance and mm. voiceover and music and it's epic. And I, the two guys that are put, like the guy and the girl that are performing for me, mm. what they have created is absolutely mind blowing. What oh, they've wow. done, like at one point, like my favorite part, I call dog bowl custard because <laughs> they literally have like choreographed this movement piece. And in a really epic part of the voiceover dialogue, um, he pours custard into a dog bowl and the female actress goes over and starts eating it out of the dog bowl. It's so confronting, man. It just blew my socks off. I was like, this wow. is cool. What sort of custard is it? I don't know. Probably vanilla. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe a little bit of strawberry in there. Who knows? Awesome. Um, so that's end of September. That's end of September. Cool. And we're, we're going to crowdfund because nice. um, I want to try and help my guys get over there. Hey, John. G'day, That's mate. my neighbour, John. Nice beanie. <laughs> Good choice. You need it around here. <laughs> yeah, solid choice. Uh, um, but yeah, we're, we're going to crowdfund it because the guys that are doing it, the, the guy and the girl, it's such an incredible piece because it's... My intention is to have the audience feel like what it would be to be a girl for the first time because it's so easy for us to put our impression onto women because yeah. you know if a girl starts crying it's oh she's hysterical or you know if she gets mad at you it's like oh she's overreacting or you know if she's trying to be sexy it's like oh she's a slut we can never just be like you can never just be a girl whereas men doesn't matter a guy yells it's like oh he's a man mm. it's that's the do you know what i mean it's like mm. you guys get the label of oh he's just being a man mm. But for us, it's it's all these other judgments that are latched onto it, and it's so hard. It's mm. really, and especially working in an industry like ours, mm. it's like I'm constantly having to work out how to wear the pants on all of my projects. Mm. Because the minute, like I've gotten onto sets and started directing actors, and they're like, oh, "You're cute," and I'm like, "Oh, sweetie, I'll show you cute." Yeah. So you know, it's it's it really is a bit of a mind game, and and that's what the play is all based around. And and I want the audience walking away from it going. Oh my god, I feel like I've just been mm. mind blown from what it would be like to be a girl for the first time. Wow. Awesome. So yeah, we're hoping to crowdfund it and send the guys over there because they've they've worked really hard and they're they're paying for it out of their own pocket and it will come to it will most likely come to Sydney as well. So nice. it'll most likely come to Sydney Short and Sweet, which is pretty friggin' cool, man. Awesome. And it's my first play. Nice. I wrote it in two days. Awesome. Yeah. Yay. And it's full of all my personal experiences from breakups, so you're welcome. <laughs> And look, before we before we leave our beautiful garden, see you John. Awesome. Good awesome. man. Yeah, good man, our neighbour John. Um, before we go, what would be a one piece of advice you'd give? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there who are aspiring actors, mm. or you know they're you know doing what we're doing, acting some of the time and and, yep. and not other times. What would be your your piece of advice as an actor to another actor? Oh man, it would just be find a way to win. Mm. Always find a way to win. There was always a way. If you pick up a script and you really like it and you want to do it. Find a way to get it made. If you're not getting that audition, how can you get yourself in the room? I once wrote, mm. I knew that Bruce Beresford wanted to make The White Mouse, which is the Nancy Wake film, and it didn't end up going ahead. The film got cancelled. However, I knew it was being made. I found out who the casting director was. I found contacts of mine that knew Bruce personally. Mm. So what I did was, and this was before I'd even done anything big on TV or mm. was even a well-known actor or anything, mm. I wrote two scenes, one in French, one in English, because I knew that she were, she lived in Paris. I went into I4 casting, got them to put down a take in French, a take in English, mm. and then I sent it off to Christine King casting, mm. and I was like, put me in the film, I'm up for it, I'm ready to do the work. Mm. I wrote the scenes myself based on the actual book, so I did wow. all the study. Wow. Then I got my friend to send them to Bruce directly. I got incredible feedback from Christine King. She was like... Not only was she impressed that I'd actually done the work myself, but she also said, look, I I will keep you in mind. I don't know whether or not we can put you in the lead role because it's like, it's Nancy Wake and I'm a nobody. It's like, yeah, good luck to you, Heather. Get bummed in seats next time. <laughs> but um, they, they really liked what I did and it was a really great way to, to put myself out there. And then a couple of months later, it was announced that the film mm. wasn't being made. So it wasn't like... I didn't get it because what I'd done wasn't enough. Mm. It didn't happen because the sh the movie itself didn't happen. But you, you know? found a way to win. I found a way to win, man. And Here we you, go. You got to. Here the Maltman. Finding a way to win. That that's uh yeah that's that's amazing advice. I'm thinking of doing another video series just called People Who Get Shit Done. And you'd be one of my <laughs> no seriously, people who get shit done because actors talk to people who get shit done, and because yeah. that's exactly what you do. Yeah, Matt, it's been awesome. We've had a cup Crash. of tea. We've had some toast. Oh. Um, love chatting. Day. Yeah, we just yeah. we hang out. Maybe we'll go and check out, see if we can find Sophia. Yeah. Oh, good old Sophia and Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. Cacao, cacao. Thanks again. See you later. Bye, guys. Bye.
Yeah, nah, sweet.